Well, on that note, hello and welcome to our Baptist Catholic podcast, the show where two Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. We are the bearded, and we don't have a guest today, so we're going to. You're stuck uh, with talk. us, people. Yeah, uh, you probably already saw the title of the episode. We're going to talk about Louis and Celie Martin because today is their their feast day. But before is it we Celie or Zeli, I'm C never Celie. It's it's French. It's French. Zelie. Louis Zeli. Louis Zeli. I that that has. You don't have to, to over exaggerate well, the. Uh, that's what you. That's how you speak French, dude. You over like do. You gotta do it like that. <laughs> I don't speak French. Que speak, que speak el, el You're gonna get mad at us for any French speakers that listen to this or watch this. We apologize for how we're gonna butcher your lovely language. Um, but um, we, I wanted to tell a, a little story before we get started. Um, I, I was not thinking about sharing this with greater audience, but. Um, It was pretty cool how things happened. I um, um, I got laid off from work on June 10th. Unfortunately, the company that I was working for uh, decided to part ways with me. That was that creates a lot of stress as a single income family household household mm -hmm. um, with so growing I, children. With growing children, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, diapers are not cheap, and um, so I started looking for jobs and. Um, Thanks be to God, I already have a job secured. Uh, so this that's like the I'm, I'm doing the punchline before. But um, the cool thing about it is that a lot of people um, prayed for my for myself and for my family. And um, there were two particular individuals that went to Solanus for intercession. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of uh, our good friends. Um, got a votive candle at Solanus's uh, center for the intention of, of me finding a job. Um, and then um, we befriended Jessica from Blessed by Cancer uh, that you probably saw the episode uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, well, she's in Detroit. So she went and mm -hmm. dropped a handwritten intention at Solanus's tomb. That's beautiful. Um, so we are just attributing this miracle of me finding the best job that God wanted me to get to bless Salas Casey. You heard it here first. Yeah, <laughs> Small miracle, probably not worth canonization, but you know, he's still working his, um, his, his intercession, um, from, from heaven. So very, very, um, thankful for mm -hmm. father Salinas to, uh, you know, do the assist, on that one <laughs> did you thank god ahead of time i mean yes and, and you and i talked about it right mm -hmm. like thank god ahead of time for the great next job that i will get and i think it's yeah. going to be a really cool one in, in my career as a professional that's awesome you know, we're going to talk a lot about what i do because you know i'm a transponster he's a, a transponster yeah, that's how i understand it I for a living. you've you've <laughs> seriously told me what you do maybe 20 times since we've met and I still have no clue what it is. I know you code. I know you do computer stuff, but I have it's, no idea how it gets applied. Yeah. I know nothing. Yeah, I know you work with that. big companies and I right. know that it's, it's pretty important what you do, but it's your Chandler from friends for me. I have, <laughs> if a, if a million dollar question came up about me explaining what you do, I would lose the million dollars. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, yeah, I just I, I work with computers and people. Let's just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So today is July 12th, and it's mm -hmm. uh, the feast day of Louis and Celie Martin. And uh, the first couple, married couple, to be canonized at the same time that are married couples that are saints separately they get canonized separately um which that's probably like a, another episode in and of itself mm -hmm. of all of the married couples um that are saints but um this particularly this particularly interesting because they they were canonized together uh which is unusual i think it's the first yeah. 
coupled together, canonized at the same time. So who 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 did the canonization? Was that Saint John Paul? No, it was uh, Pope Francis in 2015. So very oh. very recently. Got it. Um, and uh, well, I mean, for those that don't know, I mean, they're, they're the parents of Saint Teresa of Lisieux. Let's just start with that. Um, but I guess I'm going to ask you, how much do you know about Louis and Silly? I know very little. I obviously know the uh, Little Flower's parents, but I don't know. I don't know a lot about the Little Flower, to be honest. I haven't okay. read a story of a soul, but I know just the basics of, of the family, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I think I saw an Ascension video once on them that just gave a very uh, uh, a summation of, of their life. Um, right. So. Okay. So my wife and I, we have a really big devotion to them, uh, mainly because we named Lucia Therese and she is proving to behave like Therese when she was a child. So we <laughs> go to Louis and Celie for intercession. Actually, I brought some um, visual aid. That's the whole Martin family, which we'll get into it. But there's uh, Louis and Celie in the middle. The four infant children in the middle. You're 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 really away from the microphone. Sorry. Oh, um, yeah. Let's see. There you go. That yeah, that's better. Okay, so the four kids in the middle died in infancy, and then um, so they had nine children, and then the other. Five became religious, so that's pretty cool. We'll get into it. Okay, that's I'm, awesome. I'm I'm skipping ahead, and that's yeah. like a really great icon. That that's um, that's that my got. daughter Frida's favorite saint, by the way. Saint Therese. Yeah, we have the like She's the cutest. Good. We had the cutest video of Frida when she was like five or four. She was uh -huh. pretty tiny, and they had this. Um, uh, family night at, at the church where everybody would dress, all the kids would dress up as their fer, favorite saint. Mm -hmm. And I had Ana Lucia and then Frida, right? Ana Lucia was Saint Lucy. So mm -hmm. she had the crown with candles and whatnot. Yeah. And every, every kid had to come up and say who they, who they were and just like a little something of why they're known. Right. Mm -hmm. So she comes up and she says, I'm Lucia. I'm the, uh, um, my name means light and I'm the patron saint of the blind or whatever. And yeah, people clapped mm -hmm. and, but I don't see at this point was like almost hitting seven years old. So, okay. A seven year old, pretty capable of doing that. But yeah, it was like tiny. Um, and she comes, I mean, she was like dressed at St. Saint, Saint Therese with like a crucifix and like a little uh, bouquet of flowers. Mm -hmm. And she comes up, man. And she, she just memorized exactly what she was going to say. And, and she said, um, I am St. Therese of Child Jesus. You know, she had like a little list when she was little. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, um, I do great things. I do little things with great love. And people just lost it. It's like, oh, you know, it was so fun to see it. We still look at that video now. And it's just the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's it's content, dude. That's content. We need to put it on Instagram. Yeah, so yeah, we'll put it up. We'll put it up there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let's do some facts about Louis and Celie. Uh, Louis was born in 1823 in Bordeaux, <laughs> France, and Celie was born in 1831. So he was eight years older than she was. So he would be what we would call in Mexico. Uh, Santa Cunas, the cradle robber. I think that's a, a term in English. Um, it's a funny little fact. Both of them wanted to enter religious life. Louis wanted to be a monk and Celie wanted to be a religious. Um, but they understood that it was not God's will to become religious. So Louis became a watchmaker and uh, Celie had a very successful uh, lace making business, which eventually I think after they got married, Louis stopped doing making watches and just yeah. manage the the lace making um, business. Which it's just like, come to think of it, it's like lace. Well, I guess in the eighteen hundreds, lace was kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever seen lace being made? 
No, but I'm pretty sure it's very in intricate. It's and so labor complicated. I, I mean, I saw a machine do it once on Instagram, and I was like, how is this machine doing this and not messing up? I can't imagine just doing it by hand. I know. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Um, so the, both of them met at, and the, excuse me, all French speakers, Alisson, I think, in 1858, and got married after three months of courtship. It's like they knew right away. They wanted to get married. So one of those things that they were crossing, it, it sounds like a telenovela almost, they were like crossing paths on a, on a bridge. Mm -hmm. and they knew that they had to marry each other. It's just like, well, mostly because they were up there in age too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, Louis was 35 and Celie mm -hmm. was 27, which is not, oddly enough, I looked it up. Um, in the 1800s, it was not a custom to have women and men marry young. Like, mm -hmm. I thought that 26 would be, like, super old. Me too. For them to, to marry, but um, apparently that the average age for women to get married was, like, 26. And for men, it was like 25. So Louis was kind of old to get married by the 1800 standards. But Celie, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, but then they started living <clears throat> the first 10, 10 months of their marriage. They lived as celibates. Um, but then about a year after, um, about a year after their, uh, their marriage, they changed their mind based on um, uh, advice that they got from their confessors and spiritual directors and decided to have as many children as God would send them. And um, I mean, we already showed the picture for those that are watching. For those that are listening, they had nine children. Um, and five of them entered the uh, religious life. Four of them died in, in infancy. So they got, I, th I thought it was very funny. Well, not funny, but kind of like... How, how much devotion they had to the Holy Family, that all of the girls' first name is Marie, and the boys' first name is Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> yeah. So they got Marie Louise, the oldest. Um, she became Sister Marie of the Sacred Heart, Carmelite, at Lisieux. Uh, Marie Pauline, uh, religious, Mother Agnes of Jesus, Carmelite. At Lucy as well. Leonie, um, sister Francois Therese, um, she was a visiting dean uh, nun at Caen. And um, I did not know this until now that I was making research for, for this episode, but she is a candidate for sainthood since oh, January wow. of 2015. Yeah, so there might be four out of the four. nine uh, or 11 mm -hmm. in the Martin family canonized saints that's amazing uh, yeah dude that's kind of mind-blowing um and then marie Hélène, who is a uh, fourth um the fourth child she died in infancy um about four years old when she died joseph uh, louis uh, one of the boys um, and joseph jean baptiste um same thing they were about maybe not even one year old yeah um, and they were about and, a year separate, right? Yeah. And then uh, Marie Celine um, was the seven. Uh, she became Sister Genevieve of the um, Most Holy Face, another Carmelite at Lisieux. Um, and then Marie Melanie Therese, another one that uh, unfortunately passed away. And the baby of the house was Marie Francois Therese. St. Teresa of Lisieux, of the child Jesus and the Holy Face, um, who was canonized in 1925. Um, you know, I, I said that wrong in a future episode. I said that um, the Teresa died in 1925 when we were talking to Chris. Mm -hmm. So next week's episode, you're going to hear me say that St. Teresa of Lisieux died in 1925, but she did not. She died in 19, 1897. Mm -hmm. Um Canonized in 1925. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so very fruitful in, um, you know, from 1860 to 1873, they had nine children in the span of 13 years. That is uh, amazing 
to to have that and uh and the fact that they had to go through losing not one not two not three but four children four children um there are some letters of Sally where she is very um it, it is very um I, I don't know it causes anxiety in me as a parent to read those letters because I think one of the kids start to death because the wet nurse wouldn't feed the baby. Like Celie had problems with lactation. Mm. Um, and, and this is Deanna that told me that story. And I was like, my goodness, I feel for Celie so bad to, to, to experience that. Losing a child is a terrible experience to begin with, but then have to go through it four times. And, and, and they, they would still like have their joy in, in their faith. That would be like the center yeah. of, uh, of their life. Um, so this is one of the things that it's like, there's a lot of tragedy in this family, but also there's a lot of fruit in, in, in the family. Right. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, so let's say you have your, your kids that you're raising, but then in 1877, when Sally was 45, uh, she dies of breast cancer. So, <clears throat> yikes! Yeah, that's uh, that, that, and that's one of the reasons that I'm like very close and kind of like feel for Saint Louis Martin because he moved with his five daughters to Lisieux, and uh, and he has to raise all these girls by himself by himself and <laughs> and provide for them too you know i mean right that's... that's not nothing but you don't have your wife to to help out with raising of girls but then gradually those girls start leaving you for to go into the convent um I mean, that was, <laughs> I can I cannot even fathom the idea of Lucia like getting married, let alone like going into the convent, where I wouldn't see her like as uh, frequently as uh, I would want to see her. Um, but I have a quote from Louis Martin talking about his daughters going into religious life. He said, "It is a great, great honor for me that the good Lord desires to take." All of my children, if I had anything better, I would not hesitate to offer it to him. I was like, okay, well, that's yes. why the man is a saint, right? That's true. That I mean, that's why it's yeah. just like complete and utter uh, release to the will of God. Um, yeah, surrender. Is it complete surrender, and and I and I think there's no other way you can go through those hardships, you know, other than just having complete trust in 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 God's mercy and and knowing that it's it's not the end here. Um, but it is crazy to me to think how he managed with only girls in terms of like being like a single dad and back in that in that time must not have been easy especially when you have somebody like saint therese like we know she had a very particular personality yeah you know so how do you and her being the baby yeah how do you kind of like counter rest that you know i don't i don't necessarily know what type of personality um uh, Louis had, but if he was like, I don't know, was he maybe like a phlegmatic, um, you know? Well, uh, from what I've read, he, uh, well, he wanted to be a monk. So one of the cool things that I, that I read about him is that in their home in Lisieux, I think he had his own little place. Like he had his, um, kind of like. Like his almost own like a chapel, almost like a chapel oh, okay. in the attic where he would go and spend time in prayer there where he had like religious images and like a little altar and whatnot. 
and uh, he would spend time there in silence, kind of getting away from the girls, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> and the girls were, they were um, welcome to that space if and only if they were going to be there in order to pray and grow in like in communication with God. Nice. So he, t I, I guess that's also why I am like very drawn to friendship with St. Louis Martin, because he wanted to be a monk, but he became a dad. And I, mm -hmm. you know, how I like monasticism and, and, and he also structured his, um, his life with the girls and with Celie, obviously they did like, they had their work, their prayer and their uh, recreation. So they had time allotted for those three things throughout the day, um, especially because they worked together as a family. Right. Um, but even when, when he was um, by himself with the girls, um, very benedicting, I would say like Ora in Labora kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and one more thing about, like you asked about the personality and it's just coming to mind that he was also very, very much in love with, with nature. And, uh, he spoke very romantically about, um, the flowers and the trees and creation. And that's where Therese got it from. That's why got Therese it. was so able to speak in those terms of like, I am the little flower of the Lord and I just need to let himself, uh, you know, wash me with his, uh, showers of uh, rain and whatnot. Um, so there's like, you start to see like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the dad was like that. And it's a little mm -hmm. bit of, of them in, in, in the, in the child as well. Um, so, you know, there were like a very, very, they had Christ at the center of their lives and uh totally but I don't know if that's that's phlegmatic I, I, I wouldn't I don't know if I would put him as phlegmatic but um definitely a, a great man I, also one of the things that Louis I don't know so much about Celie so I'm sorry Celie that I'm not like I'm neglecting you but I, I haven't read so much about her um at uh, uh Story of a Soul so I have the quote. Uh, I don't have the quote, but I think at some point Therese said something about like God gave her parents worth of heaven more mm -hmm. than of earth. Um, and also he was very affectionate with Therese, at least. I think he would call her his little queen of Navarre or something like that. <laughs> so it's true. Therese had him wrapped around her. Yeah. Thank you. You know, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's, it's aspirations, right? As you see like this very prayerful man, um, that has to go through all of this suffering to raise very holy children, both silly and, and Louis to, to raise very holy children that eventually they decide they want to dedicate their lives to God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they're the patron saints of illness, marriage, parenting, and widowers. So there you go. It makes sense because of all the things that we just mentioned. Yeah. Um, okay, but there's more. So, so far we have, you know, they wanted, they wanted to be religious. They get married, they start having children. Some of them die in infancy. Celie, uh, dies in 1877. In 1889, Louis suffered two paralyzing strokes, uh, followed by, um, cerebral arteriosclerosis. Um, and he was hospitalized for three years at Montsever asylum in Cannes. Um, basically, I looked it up what that means. And it's like the arteries in his brain became hardened. So that's why he had like two strokes. And usually after that, after you have a, a, a stroke and have cerebral arteriosclerosis, um, 
you get incapacitated in your motor skills and, and mm -hmm. you're not able to do all of the things that you would normally do on your own. Um, so after those three years that he was in the, in the hospital, um, in, in 1882, he went back to Lisieux, um, where two of his daughters who were Carmelites. I'm not sure that Therese was one of them, must have been some of the two older um, daughters that took care of him until he died on July 29th in um, July 29th, 1894 at Chateau Lamuse, um, somewhere in France. And um, that was like his agony those last two years because he didn't have like all of his faculties. Um, he probably couldn't, I think he didn't, he wasn't able to, to like speak very well and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of like this man who was probably very able to like communicate and be active and, um, participate in the life of the, of the community and all of this to, to be hospitalized for three years. And then those last two years of his life he was not like a hundred percent. Um, so that's kind of like, a, kind of like attaching it to, to the passion, right? Mm -hmm. This, this offering. Um, so you, it, in, in, a, in a certain way, it made me think of, uh, uh, Franz Jägerstadt. When, yeah. When we did the episode on a uh, hidden life, a hidden life, just like, if we didn't know of St. Teresa of Lisieux, we wouldn't know about the parents. And then I think Leonie, the, the other daughter that is, has a cause for canonization. Um, she wrote a book about her parents, which, um, uh, it might've helped for the canonization process. Um, because there's like a lot of, well, some correspondence between Celie and some of her relatives, and then letters from uh, Louis um, and, and other people that show like their um, their faith, how they lived and uh, how they trusted God. So it's just the hiddenness of this life and how much fruit it has bore. So nine children, um, five religious, one saint, well, doctor of the church, really. Um, and then another, uh, well, right now she's a servant of God, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so like putting the bar really high, you know, for married yeah, couples. For, and for families. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, I think. But attainable, you know. Yeah. Here's here's the thing, every saint um, that that we talk about, whether it's Blessed Solanus or Saint Therese, you know, they all they all came from a family, and yeah. and and I think, um, I think we've talked about this before. The the fact that that's our mission in life, you know, to to become saints, um, and to make our children into saints. So, uh, yeah. the Martin did just that. You know, they got all their children into heaven and some of them are canonized you know that's 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 an affirmation that they are in heaven uh the fact that they're canonized um and and it's and it's attainable here now we're working towards it and anybody can can do it even the people that you know if you if you go back and think about saint paul you know, mm -hmm. or, or, or St. Ambrose or who was the one that was, I always get those confused and you always call me out on it. <laughs> Augustine. Augustine was just like a right. basket case of a person. Yes, definitely. Right. So again, it's, it's, it's amazing that all the three of these people of, of this family that we're talking about uh, are already canonized saints and one more is pretty much on her way. Um, right. 
so it's a testament to how, how they lived their life, how they lived their faith, how they loved each other, and how they loved their children, how they uh, um, it, how they confronted hardship. You know, even even the hardest of situations, it was it was a, a gift to God, and it was a grateful heart. And I don't know if that was easier to do back then. You know, because they didn't have everything that we have in terms of like technology and they didn't have so many distractions. So maybe it was easier to just like stay focused on what's important. Um, but I don't know. It's it's crazy to think, but it is achievable. I mean, when you think about it, you know, the tablet in those days were like the newspapers, right? Everybody mm -hmm. had their face in a newspaper, maybe. I don't want to say that it was the same thing, but I think that what we can um, rescue from from the life of these two saints is that if both husband and wife are seeking God or seeking to do God's will and giving their life to to God, um, kind of like everything else will fall into place. No matter, you know, the hardships, the trials, you know, yeah. the loss, the, the suffering, the physical suffering or death or anything. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things that I take to heart uh, from their lives is that they suffered so much, but they were joyful at the same time. Mm -hmm. I have to reread um, Story of a Soul because Therese does talk about her parents quite a bit and then um the father of the little flowers another one that i want to uh, check out it's on my list to to read and uh, there's a specific book about the parents of the little flower that talks mm -hmm. about more in depth about kind of an insight on on their their family life um which um you know it's a very lofty goal but it, like you said it's achievable even if we have distractions, even if we have uh, things that can uh, take us a little, give us a little detour from, from the path, um, it's still worth it, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you know why we celebrate their feast day on July 12th? I don't. So, usually... Well, the day that is picked for a saint to to be celebrated to the, their feast day is the day that they uh, entered into heaven. So, kind of like when they died, mm -hmm. not kind of when when that saint. when they died. Um, so, Therese is October first because I think she died on September thirtieth. Um, things like that. Uh, for Solanas, I think it's uh, July 30th, which is coming up mm -hmm. because he he died around that, that time frame. But what do you do when you have two people being kind of nice at the same time and they're married? Well, you pick their wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> they die at different times, right? Because that's... Correct. Mm -hmm. Is that they get two? <laughs> What's going on? So um, I guess like it sets a precedent because on July 12th is when they got married in uh, 1582, 15, 15, 15, 1858. Man, I'm like butchering. Dyslexic. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. Um, July 12th, they got civilly married. And I did not know this, but then they had a, um, a religious ceremony at midnight of July 13th. Hmm because they wanted a quiet service where they could receive communion. Nice. So they didn't have like a big wedding. Mm -hmm. They didn't have banda or like <laughs> tamboras or anything. Um, bolo, bolo. I know. <laughs> they didn't, nobody threw rice at them at the, outside of the church. So it's like very austere. I think it's just, yeah, I think it says a lot more about who I think they were. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I know that little fact about, um, so that's pretty, pretty cool about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 
I think th that is what we had to say about St. Louis and uh, Celie Martin. Do you have any closing comments, Gustavo? Well, just that I, like I said, I knew somewhat about their story. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm encouraged now to, to go and learn a little bit more. It's, it's really um, knowing about what they went through and, and how they confronted some of these things, especially the losing of the children. I cannot fathom that. We've been very blessed uh, that the both that we uh, conceived, they both are alive and kicking, kicking pretty hard, actually. Um, and so I don't, I don't have a frame of reference to what that would be. And... And that makes everything else that that might seem hard in my life just like so small in comparison. Um, so I think the the lesson that I get from from this conversation is the fact that we just have to always go back and 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 befriend the saints. Um, if you're a married couple, you know obviously a, a, a couple like Louis and Zali and and just to learn how to be joyful and how to love each other and how to love the family to the point that it gets everybody into heaven. You know, I wonder if they're up there, you know, and they're keeping scores like with other families. I don't know if like St. Gianna Mola is like, I'm going to catch up to you sometime, you know, because, <laughs> um, but I like having dumb thoughts like that. But but no, it's it's very uh, beautiful to just hear how they were so devoted that they devoted their whole life, their whole family life, you know, in 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 just in service of God, um, and and that we can strive for something like that on a daily basis. Um, that's just very reassuring, you know. Yeah, and if you're not married, if you're single, and aspire to. That you feel called to to a vocation as a married person, why not start asking for Louis and Celie's intercession? You know, mm -hmm. um, just putting it out there. Totally. So, yeah. Hopefully, you know more about Saints Louis and Celie Martin today, and uh, maybe you start having a, a devotion to them and get to know them better. Um, we'll put some links to the books in the description of the video and uh, yeah yeah especially today you know it's their feast day so um go read up have on something them. french mm -hmm. have, have something some french, french bread some, cro to... some croissants croissants have you you've made croissants right i have made them once or twice they're very that was labor enough. intensive that was enough <laughs> that was enough <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they are like five dollars a dozen at Costco. Why would I slave myself? You know what mm. it is? I have very warm hands. To mm. the, the butter would melt when I was like rolling out the the the. the you have yeah. to laminate it by hand, and it's a hassle. I bet. Uh, yeah. So that's another water. thing that I've seen done on Instagram that I'm like. I'll be right back. Yeah. I'll go pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very rewarding to, to do that. Oh, it's I a bet. labor of love. But I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Follow us for more recipes. <laughs> 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 we, see, we talked about food. That's that's good. Yeah. That's another episode Check. that we end up talking about food. Check. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Barbatus Catholic Podcast. Um, go to direct.me forward slash Barbatus for um, the show notes. Well, the show notes, we put them in the um, YouTube video now, but yeah. we have all the places where you can find us, um, our sponsors and social media and all that fun stuff. And uh, see you next week. And bless yeah. Casey. Pray for us. Pray for us. <laughs> <laughs>